من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وخاتم النبيين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المدلومين القر الميامين الذين أذهب الله أنهم الرجس وتهرهم تطهيرا ولعنة الله على آدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد Respected brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh From now onward for next numerous verses of Surah Mubarakaya Kahf is about a very interesting conversation which took place between two great personalities, two great servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and That conversation appears to be very strange type of conversation, very strange phenomena we find. And we find that Nabi Musa alayhi salatu salam, who is one of the two, being Nabi is shocked. So what about all of us? When we see and we hear and we, you know, read this conversation, it is really sometimes very difficult to absorb and understand. And a lot of questions comes in our mind. But at the same time, there are of course answers to all the questions and all the doubts. But it requires sabr. <laughs> As the other party or the ustad or the teacher of this conversation said it repeatedly, if you want to learn something, you need to have sabr. Now, a story of the people of Kahf, which we narrated, and try to explain some of the lessons we learned. One thing common between Ashab e Kahf and this story which we will start tonight, and the last story which is Zalqarnain, all of them have some, you know, abnormal phenomena, something which appears to be something, and behind the scene is something else. There are two, you know, in other words, faces of one story, of one phenomena. One what we see it by our eyes and one which is behind, of course, than what we see. Anyway, let us start, inshallah. Tonight, most likely, we will be only be able to prepare the background of this discussion, inshallah. And the real conversation will come on Sunday night, inshallah. Because tomorrow, of course, we have a special program and a guest speaker, inshallah. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Verse number 61. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa idh qala Musa li fatahu. 
لا أبرح حتى أبلغ مجمع البحرين أو أمدي حقبة This is the start of the story. And O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah is saying, Almighty, remember, when Musa said to his companion, Fatah, Fatah means young man. But if you remember, in Surah Kahf, uh, sorry, in Ashab Kahf story, we said, Fata means, literally means young man, but not necessarily always young man is regarded Fata. People with, you know, young spirit and young blood, in other words, even age-wise they are very old, they also, Quran regards them as young Fata. So, Musa said to his young friend or companion, La Abraho, I will travel until I will reach Majma al Bahrain, where two rivers or two oceans meet. O Amzi Hukoba. Though I may march on for ages, hukub means long time, long time. Some people have interpreted 80 years, for example, hukub, long time. But I want to go. I want to reach to Majmaul Bahrain, where two rivers or two oceans meet. Quickly, few points in this ayat of Quran, verse number 61. Number one, Musa. Who is Musa? Amazingly, some of us serene think that is somebody else other than Nabi Musa. But no, that is not true. More than 126 times in Quran, the word Musa, whenever it is used, it 136 times, sorry, Nabi Musa's name is mentioned. And always it refers to that Ulul Azm, Ulul Azm, sorry, Prophet Nabi Musa. Ibn Imran alayhi salatu was salam. So, so that is, for example, for sure. Okay, who is this young man who is his companion, the Fatah? According to Ahadith, of course, Quran does not specify or say exactly who, but uh, Ahadith help us from Prophet and Ahlul Bayt. This man was one of the very, very great personalities of Bani Israel, a very mu'min and a believer and a firm man with taqwa and iman, Yusha ibn Nun. He is the companion of the Nabi Musa. Majma al Bahrain, we will travel, we will not stop until we reach the Merging of two oceans, where two oceans meet. Okay. In our minds, Capetonians, immediately Cape Point comes. Huh? Uh, or Capagolas comes. Huh? But that is a bit too far from where Nabi Musa used to be. Again, Mufassirin are gone in great detail to discuss which one is this particular Majmaul Bahrain or meeting point of two oceans. At least three different possibilities are given. I don't want to go in detail. What is more likely is merging of Gulf of Aqaba, or which is called what? Gulf of Eliot, huh? Eliot, something like that. Huh? And Gulf of Suez. When they meet these two Gulf, you know, in Sinai Peninsula is in the middle. West is Suez. And this side is, of course, Aqaba. And we, they come like that, and they meet in the Red Sea. You know? So, that is the most closest point to where Nabi Musa's ge geographical position was. So, most likely, it is referring to that Majmaul Bahrain, or that particular point of meeting these two 
oceans basically. O Amdi Hokaba, it looked like that that Nabi Musa was ready to travel for long period of time. Sorry, Salawatullah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Okay, before we go, let me give you now background of this story. A story has been reported and recorded in uh, Sunni and Shia, of course, both resources. Bukhari, for example, narrated and similar stories in uh, Ahl al-Bayt or Shia resources also available. From Ubay ibn Ka'ab, I think, is the narrator that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam narrated this story in the following way. He said, Nabi Musa alayhi salatu was salam, one day he was uh, busy giving sermon and somebody in the crowd, in the audience stood up and asked this question, who is the most learned person on the earth? Nabi Musa alayhi salatu was salam responded spontaneously saying, me, of course, I am the Nabi Musa, I am the most learned person on the earth. Immediately Wahi came, Jibra'il came, Musa, this way of answering was not right. You should have replied, Allahu A'lam, Allah knows best, who is the most learned person on the earth. Because you are prophet, because you are Nabi, does not mean that you must claim it right away. Allahu A'lam. O Nabi Musa humbled down, admitted his mistake and requested, O Allah then guide us, who is the most learned person on the earth if I am not? Almighty replied and responded by saying, there is a person by the name of Khidr, on the earth at the same time like you, same era like you, he is the most learned person. Nabi Musa alayhi salatu was salam said, Ya Allah, then I should go and look for him. I must be his student. I must benefit from him. I must learn from him. How, where I am going to find? And Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied, you have to travel toward Majma'ul Bahrain. You have to travel toward Majma'ul Bahrain. Means where two rivers or two oceans meet. And, but okay, that's a very big place. Majma'ul Bahrain, huge area of course where these two, where to find him. Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a sign, indication that there will be a fish in your basket, that fish will disappear in a very funny way. At that point when your fish disappears from your basket, that is the point where you will find Nabi or for example that great personality Khizr. Nabi Musa decided to of course travel and he took Yusha ibn Nun this very very as I said, prominent mu'min of Bani Israel along with him and decided to travel to look for Khizr alayhi salatu was salam. This is the story. This is the background. Falamma balaga majma'a baynahuma nasiyahu tahuma. Allahu Akbar. But when they reached the point where the two rivers meet, two oceans meet, they forgot their fish. Okay, what happened? They are traveling now. Yusha ibn Noun and Nabi Musa are traveling toward Majmaul Bahrain. Once they reach to the point where Gulf of Aqaba and Gulf of Suez, they meet in the Red, on Red, Red, Red Sea. Now they say, okay, we reached Alhamdulillah. Now they were, Quran says they forgot about the fish. How? Quran itself says, فَاتَّخَذَ سَبِيلَهُ فِي الْبَحْرِ سَرَبًا 
they forgot their fish and it took its way into the sea as if through a tunnel or in a sneaky way all of a sudden just disappeared like that okay Quran's next verse which is verse number 62 gives little bit detail how this story unfolded falamma jawazu when they reached to that majmaul bahrain to that merging point of two oceans qala li fatah now musa said to his friend to his companion atena ghadana bring our food Ghada basically is dinner or supper. Okay, that's another discussion, but let's not go there. Atena ghada na. Bring our lunch. We packed lunch with us. We got a fish with us. Bring it. Lakad lakayna min safarena haza nasaba. We have surely fatigued by today's journey. This journey was a tiring journey. probably it took very long for them to reach to that point so we are hungry we are tired bring the food bring the basket qala araita iz awaina ila sakharati fa inni nasitu luhuta wama ansani illa shaitan an azkurahu wa takhaza sabilahu fil bahri ajaba now you shall have noon this friend companion said when musa said okay bring the fish out let's have lunch his friend said to him oh i'm sorry when we took rest when we took a small break under the rock at that point fish disappear but i forgot to tell you that fish disappeared because now hadith this is not quran hadith says that from the basket fish while probably it was a cooked fish or according to narration from imam baqir alaihi salatu wassalam it was salted fish you know the fish they you people also got that lot of tradition what you call it i can't remember now when you salt the fish and dry it in the sun ha huh? ha whatever now so it was a dried fish with the salt means it was not a alive fish so yusha ibn abun took to ocean to wash it so can eat it or prepare it that fish slipped out of the hands went into the river disappeared allahu akbar fish which was dead became alive this is one possibility as imam said oh maybe other possibility that fish was still alive and whatever in any way again tafsir got lot of discussion so he says that now when he came back he saw musa sleeping so because he saw musa is sleeping he didn't wake up musa he said tomorrow i will tell him or afterward i will tell him that fish is gone now when musa ask where is the fish he says sorry i forgot and why you forgot he said what made us to forget is shaitan shaitan made me to forget to tell you that fish disappeared now very interesting point i can even explain it right now here i thought maybe afterward but we can even discuss now right here why shaitan what was the interest of shaitan to let them forget to make them forget that fish disappeared next verse is saying explains answers ha huh? so wama ansaniya no one made me forget except shaitan and azkurahu that i should tell you wattakhaza sabilahu fil bahri ajaba in a very you know surprising and strange manner fish disappear oh so fish disappeared what nabi musa said qala dalik ma kunna nabghi oh 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 we got our place oh that's what i wanted ha huh? that's what we were looking for disappearance of fish you remember that story i told you from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said 
that Almighty, when he Nabi Musa asked where I can find Khizr, Almighty said, go to the Majmaul Bahrain where two rivers or two oceans meet and when your fish will disappear. Oh, so Musa said, okay, okay. So that is the place where fish disappear. There is the place I will find my Murshid, my Ustad, my teacher, my Guru, whatever you want to call. Oh, oh he was very happy. So now you understand what was the reason for shaitan to let them forget. Because shaitan wanted to delay as much as possible meeting of Nabi Musa with Nabi Khizr. Because that was a sign of finding the great man Khizr. Allahu Akbar. Qala dhalik ma kunna nabghi. This is what we were looking for. Let's go back. Let's go back to that same rock where we took rest. Because that is the place we will find our men. That's the place we will find our what we want. So the two of them turned back, retracting their footsteps. Going, 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 finding exactly where they took rest under the rock. They went all the way there. Okay? Now when they reach there, Allahu Akbar. Fawajada abdan min ibadina. But before I reach to those verses, let me just explain to you few important lessons, even in these few verses. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. First of all, seeking knowledge, hmm? seeking knowledge is important, is crucial. Even for a Nabi, it is important to continuously seek knowledge and if you have to travel to seek knowledge also it is good oh I'm the hukaba I will carry on even it takes 80 years look that's the meaning hukaba long time hukaba 80 years in other words Musa was saying to find this man who can teach me who got better knowledge than me I'm ready to travel for 80 years this is this is very important lesson. Another important lesson, please, please, very interesting one. A student must go to teacher. Teacher mustn't come to student. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Lot of times. We in our life expect that Alim must come and rescue us. We expect and if he does not come, we get upset. But why you didn't teach? My brother, this is important. The thirsty must go to the well, to the water. Not water should come to the thirsty. Very important, very important. Key point. Okay. Okay. And also another very important point. Nabi Musa alayhi salatu was salam is not a just a Nabi. You know, we got 124,000 of Ambiya prophets according to some rivayat. And some of them are Nabi for a small village, for a family, for a small town. And some of Nabis are for nations. And Nabi Musa is among one of the most high profile Ambiya prophets. Ulul Azm, we call them high profile prophet, prophets. I don't think any prophet's name is mentioned in Quran more than Nabi Musa. 136 times Quran mentions Nabi Musa's name. So Nabi Musa is not a just any Nabi or any prophet or anybody. No, very, very high profile prophet. 
but these verses first message right here we learn that someone of musa's level and caliber high profile nabi and prophet but his knowledge is limited his knowledge is limited and possibility of progress of evolution of going further in knowledge is even nabi musa also there even in case of nabi musa also there there's no full stop no nabi musa also okay salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad ha verse number 65 fa wajada now when they came back to the rock where fish went missing fa wajada both of them they found abdan min ibadina atainahu rahmatan min indana wa allamnahu min ladunna ilma allahu akbar so beautiful is this verse to introduce personality of this ustad personality of this guru personality of this murshid personality of this teacher allahu akbar fa wajadna musa and yusha ibn nun musa and his companion found abdan min ibadina servant from our servants i am just explaining to you beautiful really allahu akbar one side is nabi musa ulul azm high profile nabi okay very high level and there allah is ordering him to go and be humble in front of another person who is khizr but when allah introduces that high than high khizr how he introduces abdan min ibadina servant from our servants very clear message there is nothing higher status than status of ubudiyat abdan min ibadina what is the first definition first description of this great man abdan min ibadina servant from our servants you know this is very important to reach to a real level of being servant of allah is important ha huh? that is the highest level that is the highest level person can reach i remember there was a very big conference on nahjul balagha long long ago imam rahmatullah aur imam khomeini rahmatullah alaihi was still alive and he gave a message as a opening message to that conference of nahjul balagha Uh, the book of compiled by uh, said razi the book which has of course sermons and letters and short sayings of imam ali alaihi salatu wassalam so imam khomeini gave a opening message to that conference on nahj bilag i remember still i was a very young student that time imam in that opening statement wrote nothing no word can better define ali then being abdullah nothing nothing can better no word can better or more precisely define ali than being abdullah being achieving this status of abd of allah abd of allah maqam e ubudiyat allah akbar allah abdan min ibadina atainahu rahmatan min indana we have given him a special mercy of course from our selves min indana atainahu rahmatan min indana amazing emphasis min indana wa allamnahu min ladunna ilma and we have taught him min ladunna against from our selves knowledge special knowledge big knowledge ilma nakara 
يدل على التعظيم you know allamnahu min ladunna ilma so two quality three qualities of nabi khizr number 1 abd number 2 receiver of rahma number 3 receiver of ilm ladunni please huh? abd i explain to you what is rahma what means that he received a he, he was bestowed upon him rahma from allah subhanahu wa taala ulama mufassirin says rahma means nabuwwat prophethood maybe of course later maybe we'll argue and discuss who was nabi khizr was he nabi or not most likely according to our understanding he was of course nabi no doubt about it but this rahma not necessarily referring to his nabuwwat this rahma is referring to a very please listen please i need your attention this rahma is referring to a very special condition and a status of readiness of tahayyur readiness of receiving haqaiq the divine realities and the truth wa atainahu min ladunna atainahu rahmatan min indana means he had this special mercy from us he has that readiness he has that potential he has that capacity to receive these great ma'arif this is number 2 an ilm ladunni what is it that you know there is a knowledge which you learn in school which you learn from experience which you learn by experiment which you learn from i don't know different resources but ilm ladunni is none of them that's a knowledge which comes directly from allah these are the three qualities of nabi khizr alayhi wa alihi salat was salam alayhi wa ala nabiyyina salat was salam salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad imam sadiq alayhi salat was salam was asked this question ya ibn rasulullah nabi musa is ulul azm prophet khizr we don't know but how come quran says and it appears that khizr was more higher than musa imam alayhi salatu wassalam replied in certain part musa was higher like in the matters of sharia musa was much more knowledgeable but in certain knowledge probably referring to you know mystical approach secrets of world i don't know what that was more particular to nabi khizr alayhi salatu wassalam so both of them were very knowledgeable but the knowledge which nabi khizr had is referred to secrets to ma'arif which are behind the normal world behind our eyes and behind the scenes okay this is introduction of khizr in quran abdan min ibadina atainahu rahmatan min indana wa allamnahu min ladunna ilma three qualities qala lahu musa now when musa found his last musa found his murshid musa found his you know what he was looking allahu akbar musa nabi ulul azm everything how he humbles down this, this is this is all lessons brothers this is all dars this is all you know guidance qala lahu musa hal attabi'uka ala an tu'allimani mimma ullimta rushd musa said to khizr may i follow you that you may teach me something of the wisdom that you have been taught okay mimma ullimta rushda wisdom again very clear message the one which i just now mentioned evolution progress even in case of anbiya also possible they are infallible they are much more higher than us 
but it does not mean there's a full stop they don't progress no no they do progress they do evolve only difference is that we in different valley they are in different valley their progress is on a different level our progress is on a different level where our progress reaches highest point their progress starts from that point onward salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad a lot of people ask this question that imam hussain alaihi salatu was salam said the shuhada salamullah alayhi before karbala and after karbala were same no before karbala imam hussain is great absolutely no doubt imam hussain is infallible no doubt imam hussain is imam no doubt imam hussain is one of the most beloved servants of allah no doubt imam hussain is sayyida shabab ahl al janna no doubt imam hussain is part of rasulullah no doubt all that is there before karbala but after traveling karbala after doing what he did in karbala naturally hussain even progress further than that allahu akbar and therefore assalamu alayka ya sar allah wa abna sare ah his blood becomes blood of allah salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad ha qala lahu musa adab manners musa does not come and tell him come teach me now no no there is can i follow you can come can i come behind you can i walk behind you are you with me that's how if you want to learn from ustad from a teacher something you have to be respectful these two young boys are listening so nicely i would like to tell them if you want to learn you need to be humble you cannot be rude to your teacher if you are rude to your teacher you will never learn but if you are nice respectful humble before your teacher you will learn is it clear salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad ha qala lahu musa musa said hal attabi'uka ala an tu'allimni mimma 'allimta rushda now what was the answer of khizr qala innaka lan tastati ma'i sabra allahu akbar ustad and teacher knows capacity of student knows where is he ustad said teacher said musa sorry you will never be able you will not be able to you know have sabr he answered you will surely not be able to bear with me no you will not be able to be to bear with me to stay with me to come with me allahu akbar khizr because spiritually is on his that level he can see the future he can see the future he knows what will happen he knows how musa will react and respond right but he says he said you will not be able to bear with me very important point very important lesson to learn brothers sisters if you want to learn something basic condition is sabr basic condition is sabr you will never be able to understand everything from day one lot of things you have to believe in it whatever teacher is saying to you you have to accept it as it is until gradually things become clear for you again one of the you know philosophy of education again even in the worldly information and education teacher comes teaches you something now from day one why like that sorry you can't get anywhere you have to wait you have to have sabr wait you must evolve you must reach to a point where you will become capable of understanding don't just get upset oh i don't understand so let go to hell no i don't want no 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 have sabr have patience sabr sabr tolerance is very important condition for educational progress for educational evolution 
for understanding and knowing and growth. Not possible without sabra. There are secrets which are in the hand of teacher. The way you look at the things is something. The way real things are in the background are different. You will immediately, you know, in other words, please listen carefully. This is a very important point. Don't be judgmental. Hmm. Lesson is don't be judgmental. Don't quickly reach to conclusion. Don't look only apparent things, the outside things, and decide it is like that. No, hold down, hold on. Maybe there's a much more deeper secret hidden behind. The way things look in front are not exactly what it is in real. Kala inna kalan tastati ima, tastati ima hai sabra. O Musa, you will surely not be able to bear with me. And this is the explanation which I give you. How you can bear, how you can be tolerant about something you are not aware. You cannot encompass in your knowledge. Which you cannot encompass, which you cannot include in your knowledge. Because your knowledge is limited. And you will see only that thing. You don't understand what's the background and secret. So you will run away. You will run away. You will bust, you will explode. How Musa answered beautifully. Kala. Musa continued with his humbleness, with his respect, with his manners. Kala satajeduni inshallah sabiran wala asi laka amra. No khazr, please, please, don't reject me. I want to learn. Inshallah, you will find me among those who are patient. And I shall not disobey you in anything. Wala asi laka amra. Amazing. Respect. He didn't say, no khazr, I will be able to do that. He said, you will inshallah find me among the patients. This is respect, this is manner, this is humility. Allahu Akbar. I will not disobey you. I will listen to you. I am not going to ask you. I will have sabr. With all these promises, what? Khazar says, Qala. Fa'in ittaba'atni. Fa'in ittaba'atni. Sorry. So, Khazar said, if you followed me, ittaba'atni, ittaba'atni, you have followed me, you came behind me, fala tas'alni anshay. Don't ask me anything. Hatta uhdisa laka minhu zikra. Until I myself explain to you, mention to you, explain to you, uhdisa laka minhu zikra. I will explain what is the reasoning. You're not going to ask. You just look and watch what is happening while you are traveling with me. Allahu Akbar. Until this point, you know, argument went. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Once again, salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. From this point onward, now the real journey starts when Nabi Musa travels along with Nabi Khazr and Nabi Khazr does few things which are beyond expectation of Nabi Musa. Inshallah, now that's a different discussion from verses 71 onward and there is the main discussion where questions come in mind and all those arguments and counter argument. Very interesting and very important discussion of Surah Mubarak Kahf from verses 71 onward, inshallah, on Sunday night. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. But even till this part, you can see from this story. How many important lessons we already learned? Allahu Akbar.
Any questions? Yes, Sheikh Saeed.